All right, you've all been waiting a while for this. This is the any percent no taxi glitch tutorial for Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Now, if you don't know how the leaderboards are organized, pretty much what we've done, what we've decided to do over the past couple of weeks of the game being out, is because you guys already know there's a glitch where you can just warp to the end of the game just by hitting the same warp with two inputs at once. We have any percent and 100 percent boards. And there is a taxi glitch and no taxi glitch option option for both of those speed runs. And there's also a separate section for console. So like Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. I, I've just been playing this on PC, so yeah. Um, you have options for all those separately. So this, this tutorial is only going to be for the PC speed run. It's the most popular right now, so... It's also the one that I've been playing myself, and I don't really know how these tr these tricks change when you go to console. So this tutorial is specifically for the PC version. So uh, that's what we're doing today, and I'm going to teach you guys how to get your PC stuff set up for speedrunning this game. Now, one of the rules we have in place is that you have to use the live split auto splitter for this um, this game to speedrun the game. So what I have here is live split. If you guys don't know how to use it, um, I will link the program in the description. All you got to do is download it, open it, and I will link these uh, splits in the description as well so you can download them as well. And this will probably already be activated by the time you get these splits because I think it would save in the file. But just in case they aren't, I'm going to show you how to activate the auto splitter for this game so you can time your runs. Now, all you got to do is hit activate and then go to settings. So here you have your component settings for the live split auto splitter. Um, what you want to do, the only ones that are necessary, absolutely necessary to run the game, are auto set, auto auto reset preference um, on new game, so that way the game resets for you and automatically starts a timer for you. And for the chum bucket, all the way down here, or whatever your final split is, make sure it goes to game end. So the reason why these two are abs why these two are absolutely mandatory is so the timer automatically starts when you start the game and it automatically ends when you end the game simple and the reason why you need to have this for the speed the pc speed run is because this auto splitter removes load times from your game while you're playing so the, the timer will automatically pause while you're playing and that like it'll, it'll automatically pause during the loading screens while you're playing so that way no matter what kind of PC you have if your PC is a potato or if it's like a, a new gen it's got a, it's got all the the good stuff in it you know like doesn't doesn't really matter what you have as long as you have this active your loading times will be will not be included in the timing and you're on even footing with everybody else um, so that's how you do the auto splitter and once you have all this done you hit OK and uh, you can you can just hit OK after that. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Um, if you want to have horizontal splits, if your if your preference is is um, horizontal splits, all you have to do is go to Edit Layout Horizontal or Vertical, right here, Horizontal or Vertical. Uh, a lot of people are choosing to do horizontal splits because the game is 16 by 9, but um, if you if you want to do the vertical splits and put them in the corner or something like that, that's an option as well. All right. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, um, we have to do one more thing. Uh, because the physics get weird on higher frame rates and because most people cannot run this game at 146 or below that or higher consistently, we actually decided to cap the frame rate at 60 FPS. So in order to cap your frame rate, well, first thing you have to do is make sure your frame rate is showing. So what I'm going to do is shift tab to bring up the Steam menu when you're in the game, hold Shift Tab. Then you can go to Settings down here. So you can see my mouse is on Settings. Then you can go to In Game, and it should say In Game FPS Counter, and you can turn that on to like wherever you want it, like top left, top right. I usually do top right, and uh, you can choose High Contrast Color just to make sure it shows up if you want, and it'll show up right in the corner. You see that? Um, that's how I do it. There are other programs that can do it for you, but this is the easiest way of doing it, in my opinion, if you already have the game on Steam. Uh, there's one more thing as well. If your game's not already capped at 60 FPS, because you might have VSync on by default with whatever capture card, whatever whatever graphics card you have, um, 
I know most AMD users can't really turn this off anyway, which is part of the reason why we chose to do this. So if your frame rate is above 60 FPS when you turn on that counter and you want to cap it at 60, because remember you have to have it capped at 60 to have your run eligible for the leaderboards. All you have to do is go to this path here, uh, users from each shift, because yeah, um, app data, local, pineapple, saved, config, windows, no editor. And all you have to do from here is, um, I believe it's the game settings. Yeah, it's, 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 it's game user settings. Yes, yeah, so you want to go to this and hit edit. So this is game user settings. Now, if you scroll down, you will see frame rate limit. And for me, I have it set to 60, but for you, it'll be set to zero because the devs didn't set a frame rate for the game. It's just the default zero. So all you have to do is scroll down to frame rate limit, set this to 60. When you're done, you, know, you hit saved and uh, it should be saved. You should have frame, lim frame limit 60. Um, obviously you should probably close the game while you're doing this and restart after you finish your edits. But yeah, close the game, set this to 60, save it, exit, reopen the game. And uh, yeah, you should have 60 FPS in Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. So that's all you have to do to get started running the game. You have to do the auto splitter, which I showed. You have to show your frame rate on the screen, which I've showed. And you have to edit your, your settings to put it to 60 FPS if you're not getting 60 FPS. All right. That's all you have to do. If you're below 60 FPS, if your computer for some reason can't handle 60 FPS, that's fine. The rule is that it just can't go above 60 FPS. So now that we have that all cleared up, um, I guess we could start teaching the game. That's, that's pretty much it. All right, now we're actually ready to get to the gameplay portion. So to do this, um, the auto splitter will activate when you start the game. So just hit new game, choose a file you want to go over and just hit OK whenever and uh, it'll start for you. Welcome See that? And watch the timer when I hold B. When the loading screen starts, it'll pause and like it'll not include the loading screen, the timing. All right. So pretty easy. That's all you got to do. And uh, as you can see, it's timing, but whenever I load the game, once again, this graphic here is not actually a loading screen. When you see loading, that's when it starts loading. And it's not going to include in the timing, right? Now, to start the run, the first thing we're going to do, because the devs forgot to lock it, all you do is pause the game, go to Patrick's um, socks, and just warp to 10 socks to Patrick, because the devs forgot to lock this task when you start the game, so therefore... You can just go straight to it. And the reason why we're doing this now is because we're going to go back to the pineapple later to get the spatula in the closet without having to go around in the in the kitchen to get the shiny objects. So the first thing you do is just go straight to Jellyfish Fields. Um, the beginning of this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that for some, for some loading screens, you can actually hold the B button to buffer. Again, I'm using an Xbox One controller, but if you're using keyboard and mouse or whatever control you're doing you can you can just relate this to whatever control you're using you can hold down this the skip button during a, a most loading screens to skip the cutscene like to start skipping it as the game's loading so you can do that um, make sure that you're hitting these tiki's as you're running through by the way because hitting these tiki's um, will make sure you have enough shiny objects to buy the sea needle in the next split so make sure you're doing that uh, this first jump, so if you've played the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, there is a slight difference in how the spin works in this game for spin stalling. Spin stalling is in this game, but it doesn't set your um, it doesn't set your falling speed. It more or less just kind of works more like um, like how you'd expect physics to work, where if you jump off of something, it's it's not going to do as much of a stall if you're falling already. It's like in the original game, if you stopped here. It would just kind of stop you, but um, in this game you have to you have to kind of do it while you're jumping to make it work. So keep that in mind. You have, when you time your spins, make sure you're not waiting too long, otherwise it's not going to be as effective. But in this game, you also have a bit of a difference where if you use the spin twice, you can still keep your stall. So in the original game, if you spin and you try to spin again, the second one won't stall you. But in this game, you can do it twice. So, all I'm going to do 
is jump, spin, jump, spin, and you can make this jump here. Just keep that in mind that in the original game where you normally do jump, jump, double jump, spin, or jump, spin, jump, in this game you want to do jump, spin, jump, spin. Now for this jump, um, you see these little scrapes in the wall, the brown scrapes, so I'm going to jump on them now, but you see this? You can kind of just jump here, use the brown scrapes as an indicator to see where to jump. And we're going to jump to this little cliff, this little cliff side that you're seeing right here. So if you do a jump, spin, jump, and, pu and push into the wall, you should be able to make it here. Uh, this jump may take some time to get down because it is a little bit difficult, but you should be fine. It's not too difficult. Nothing in this game right now that I'm going to teach you is too difficult, and the route is capable of getting you know, like top times, like a 53, 54 right now. Um, I'm not sure if it's capable, I don't think this this route is capable of world record, but that shouldn't be your concern if you're just getting into the game now. But seeing as, you know, most of the tricks in this game are pretty accessible and pretty easy at the moment, you should be able to get in and get a decently competitive time with the strats I'm teaching you. I mean, these are the strats that I use when I play the game, so yeah. Um, so again, you want to jump up here, just follow my path. There's an invisible wall here, so you want to double jump and spin over it, and you can land on it. And just walk to the sign on the ground and keep going until you jump over these little Pringle rocks here. And you should get Gary's text box. You need to get the text box so he doesn't interrupt you later. Uh, now, you might notice you can do hold the skip in this game for the cutscenes and the dialogue. But you should not hold down the B button for, or whatever your skip button is for all the dialogue. For some of it, you just want to mash through. This is one of them where the dialogue is short enough to just mash through instead of holding B. So now, you're going to do a jump, spin, jump to the bungee. Let it kind of go into the spatula and then pause the game and select cow bungee and rework. Again, this is another reason why this is not going to be a console tutorial because in this, you can get away with reloading the game and not having the loading screen take take up your time because the game, the game pauses, like the timer pauses while you're loading the level. So on PC, since, since loading screens aren't included in the timing, Sometimes you can get away with that, so uh, I was showing you all the places where you can do that. This next jump is a little bit more tight. You just kind of want to stand up here, and what I find makes this pretty consistent is when you double jump to this ledge and face toward the pink wall. So make sure you're facing toward the wall. Um, makes it the easiest to get up here, so you can just yeah. do that. So maybe start like between these like little white, um, I guess like stars on the wall double jump and face into the wall. And from here, um, you can get rid of him if you really need to, to focus on this next part. But to get on top of this trampoline, jump to this part of the tree which you can stand on. Now you might notice there's, there's, an, like, there's a little invisible yeah. wall there. There's an invisible wall so you can't get up. So maybe just feel around a little bit to see um, like where it is. But once you have an idea of where it is, all you gotta do is walk off this tree and double jump onto it. You're, what you're doing is you're jumping under the invisible wall to get to the trampoline. Once you're up here, you've had the sock, you can jump on the trampoline. And we're gonna do another jump, spin, jump, spin to space over to this cliff over here. And this next part, we're gonna do jump, spin, jump, spin again, but we're going to try and space it for height. So try to get as high as possible to get the sock. That time I dropped my input, so we're just gonna do it again. And spin while you're in midair to kind of stop yourself and guide yourself to the tree. Uh, this tree might take some time to do the platform, to get the platforming down, but you're aiming for this area right here. And you can jump back and land on the tree again. Then jump on this part of the tree that's closest to the cliffs. Oops. And now you wanna do a jump, spin, jump, spin to the cliffs. Pretty, pretty simple. You can jump over this gate. Um, if you're not comfortable going for this, understandable. But a way to skip the spatula is by jumping over it, mashing the enter button, whatever you have it set to. And you can enter and collect the spatula at the same time. Here you can hold B to skip his text and start sliding. Make sure you're hitting these tiki's on the way because we do need these tiki's to these shiny objects to buy the sea needle later on. So keep that in mind going forward. Just uh, make sure you're getting those shiny objects. Jump when you're on the edge of the slide, go over the box to make sure you open it, and you should touch this cutscene, which you can mash through. Um, as you can see, the box is open. If it's not open, you want to go get that later, because we're going to backtrack. 
Now, if you're having trouble with the skip, all you can you can just do the little challenge where you hit the buttons and go up to Patrick. But if you're not having trouble with the skip, this is what you should do. Um, it might be kind of difficult for you to. Oh, um, by the way, I want to make sure that you're already doing this. Go to video, go to gameplay settings and turn the smart camera off. I find that to be pretty helpful for setting up a lot of these tricks. If you want to use inverted controls for made a tutorial that works just fine, you can just uh, watch that. I'll put it in the description if you want to use inverted controls. Alright, so what I look for when I do this trick is I try to line up Spongebob facing the part of, uh, if you see how there's kind of grass hanging off the cliff and you see there's um, a chunk of green where the grass is not hanging off, you want to try to space off the cliff by using the spin to delay your fall, because if you walk off it just kind of makes you fall faster. So you want to use your spin to delay your fall. And then you're going to do a jump spin, jump, jump spin, jump, and then slam when you touch the wall. Um, I'm going to try my best to show this to you, just so you can watch it back. And that time I messed it up. So I think I'm thinking too hard about it. Again, I'm not an expert at this game. I've only been playing it for two weeks, so yeah. And I'm not used to setting this up, like, deliberately. I usually just kind of eyeball it and do it without a setup, so uh, yeah. It's pretty lenient. Um, you don't really have to do it in any specific spot, really, once you get used to it. But uh, I'm gonna actually try to... I have to warp to the pineapple to get Spongebob back, but um, I'll try to show it multiple different ways just so you can kind of get a feel for it. It feels weird like it's not gonna work when you try it, but um, once you get it down, it feels a lot easier. So I'll set it up the way I usually do. Yeah, I'll just do it a bunch of times. So what I find to be the hardest part of this trick is spacing the spin jump off the cliff because the grass is kind of in your way. It's hard to see the grass because it's hard to see where you're jumping because the grass is kind of too high. But once you get used to spacing it. Once you notice that you touch the wall, that's when you want to slam. See? And, uh... I learned this trick by just watching somebody else do it a million times, so... If you're one of those people who learns by watching, I'll just do it a bunch of ways so you can kind of see... My mic's too close. If you want to see... It done in a variety of scenarios, like what works and what doesn't work. I'll just do it a bunch of times, just so you can see. Alright. Hope that works out for you. Now, obviously, at this point, you should be Patrick, so what I'm gonna do... Is switch back to Patrick to kind of simulate what you'd be doing at this point. So you're Patrick, you just got the spatula over there, so all you gotta do I'll just go back here to show you so what you'd be seeing. You collect the spatula, you're right here as Patrick, so you're gonna pause the game, warp to SpongeBob's closet. And because developers don't have a check here to see which character you are going in, you can just enter the pineapple as Patrick. And because you already have a bunch of shiny objects, you can just go into the closet and grab the spatula. Just a quick little tutorial on Patrick's movement. All you gotta do is just keep using the belly hump attack as it propels you forward. It makes you go a little bit faster, so we just propel him forward into the closet, and uh, you can get the spatula. But when you go back to the bikini bottom, it's gonna check to see which character you are, so you can just, you'll be Spongebob again, but uh, yeah. That's just a little home invasion strategy to get to the spatula. Now we're gonna go straight to Squidward's house. You can just hold B on this one, and again, like usually if it's the first one, if it's the first dialogue in a load, you can usually get away with holding it because it starts, 
it starts skipping while you're still loading. So this game works a bit differently from the original game, where you have to jump 10 times and reach a certain height 10 times to make him give you the spatula. But in this game, all you have to do is touch the ground five times. So we're gonna count. So that's touch the ground once, two, and you wanna hit these. Three. Make sure you're destroying all these things the way I am too. You can jump over here as four. And in, in the midair, you can hit both of these before touching the ground as five. You can mash to get out of that. And if you did it correctly, you should have the spatula here with the, uh, the music sheet as well. You want to do a bubble slam over both of them. So you can collect the spatula while you destroy that and the, and the sock cutscene comes up so that way you can skip the sock cutscene and get the sock... Excuse me, you can, you can skip the, the spatula cutscene and get the sock at the same time. Now you're just going to go behind Squidward's house, jump on this tiki, double jump to the tree, single jump to this, and jump spin, jump spin if you have to to get here. You can grab the ledge, climb up and get the, um, the golden underwear, because we need that for later, for grinding. And again, jump spin, jump spin. I feel like you guys already kind of get the point with jump spin, jump spin, so from this point on, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Um, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. SpongeBob. If you happen to miss this wheel, easy way to recover it is by jumping and bashing to get next to it. Now, I've noticed that when you jump... In this game, you can actually jump with the sponge ball. When pressing A in the original game would kind of just make you leave the sponge ball, you can jump while you're doing this. But I've noticed that in jumping, it kind of pushes you forward a little bit. So I usually just, like, jump a lot before while I, while I go over to this area to get the cutscene. Hold B to skip it. Now here you want to be careful to manage your underwear and stay away from the sinks. You want to bash into these and slam on your way down and hit the button. Do that going around this way. Keep an eye on the sinks to make sure you don't get hit. But here you're not going to bash this one because we have one underwear left. We're just going to hit it this way. Because when you slam this way, you can kind of hit it with the bat, with the, um, the bubble bounce. Without having to destroy the tiki's and you can climb up. This is a bit tricky because... The, the geometry on it is kind of weird to jump on. You kind of slip off of it a lot, but don't get frustrated if, it, if it's giving you trouble. Now from here, we're going to do some jump spacing to touch this tiki without actually hitting it. And ignite it to get some shiny objects. Make sure you step on this to ignite it as well. Here I'll show you two ways. Try to ignore the tartar sauce guy, but for the sake of teaching you guys what to do, I'm just going to get rid of him to teach you. Um, there are two ways you can get on this building. You can jump from this rock to here. Well, obviously, remember, make sure you get the sock as well. I forgot to mention that. Get the sock. Easy way to do this is going up here this way. And you can also do it this way. Some people find this one easier. Because you can just kind of hold forward the entire time. Now, take notice that the tiki's here are kind of bobbing up and down. You want to jump to the platform with the sock. Um, if you... Like, like, when this is pushing all the way up. So you don't... So you have, like, enough space to get on top. You see what I mean? Like, the jump would be more difficult if it's on its lower end. Um, you can jump up here to make this easier to, to look at the um, to jump on top of this thing, because you only get one shot at this. If you miss it, I'll show you a backup, but uh, yeah. You want to jump on top of it, jump, spin, jump to get to the building. If you miss it, all you got to do is just kind of warp, pause the game, warp back the tiki's go boom, and try again. I find that to be the most simple way of getting around here, to make sure you get the sock and stuff, but yeah. Uh, again... Make sure you spin before doing the spin, jump, spin, jump, spin, or whatever, to get maximum distance off the building. And then you can walk straight to Gary. And talk to him. Hold B, and you can pause the game. Again, because we're on PC, we're not including loading times. Pause the game and warp to learn Sandy's moves. Now that we're here, I'm going to teach you the main tech of this game. People are referring to it as Flying Squirrel, Infinite Lasso, Hover, whatever you refer to it as, it's the Sandy Flying Glitch. So, all you do for this is grab a ledge and hold down the LT button. That's it. Um, LT for me is the, um, I guess this button right here, it's like on top of the controller, right? You see this one here, the, like the top left trigger? I'm just going to reload the level so I can show you. I, I think this might also work with um, the A button, but I'll try it again. 
There's a button you can use to lasso without having to jump a second time. I'll see if it works with the jump button as well. That only works with LT. So, whatever button you have that causes you to lasso without doing a second jump, uh, this is what you want to use. If you're having trouble getting it, sometimes you need to reset it. So say you do this a bunch of times and you're like, oh, I'm not getting it. All you got to do is just jump and use LT to reset it and you can try again. So grab the ledge and while you're grabbing it, hold LT. That's all you got to do. Now, teach you a little bit of Sandy's movement with this glitch. Um, she will hover infinitely and if you jump like this, you're not going to be able to get back down. You just kind of float infinitely. So I'm going to show you how to control it because I feel like that's the most important thing to understand with this game is how to control ILH. So, again, you want to grab the ledge while holding it. Um, what you want to do as well is push into the ledge while you're doing it, so that way you can grab it, so you can kind of be grounded. You don't, if you're under here, like if, you, if you're if you stuck under it, like it's pretty, there are ways of getting down. Most of the time, if you hug a wall in this game, um, kind of like push into it, you can usually find some way to do this, see right here. Doing this kind of pushes you down, so if you get stuck, you can just do that. Um, but once you're on the ground, once you touch the ground once, you regain your ability to descend by pressing the LT button. So you can jump and descend by pressing LT. Again. Jump and descend by doing that. Um, you cannot descend unless you touch the ground once. And uh, no, grabbing a ledge and landing here from grabbing the ledge doesn't count. You have to actually physically walk off the ledge and walk back on to regain your grounded state. But... That's pretty much it for ILH. You'll kind of get used to it as you use it. Um, make sure you touch the ground before you jump. Otherwise, you'll just keep floating and you won't be able to get back down. So it's all about keeping track of how many times you've jumped, how many times you touch the ground. So for this first one, you don't actually have to touch the ground because all we're going to do is float over to under this window here, jump and touch the bottom of the window, and then if you push off the window, it kind of pushes you into the spatula. Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention after Jellyfish Fields, you're going to do a manual split. So um, if you have the splitting bound to your space bar or whatever key you have it bound to. Some people do auto splitting. I don't really use that personally because the game's changing so much. But yeah, you can just split whenever you, when you warp to, um, when you warp to Spongebob's closet as Patrick, you can just press the manual Oh, I'm button. quick! So yeah, um, jump into this and enter with the button to get here. Now we're going to do a lot more ILH on top of this, um, this building. Um, so again, activate the glitch, walk off, touch the ground so you regain your ability to descend. Jump and descend to unlock this box. Now I'm going to go around this building to try and, if you, if you go too close to it, you'll get this cutscene. So try to, try to avoid that. If you go around and you touch the ground, you should have the ability to descend. Watch out for the tartar sauce guy, because if he hits you and you don't have your jump, you're just going to keep floating. So watch out for him, don't get hit. Once you do that, jump into the wheel, and then you can descend when you go up to this building here. Again, rewatch that if that was going too fast for you. But once you're on top of this building, float off, and what you're looking for, you see where my shadow is on the ground? You want to put your shadow right over here until you stop seeing the shadow. You see how the shadow is not showing anymore? We're looking for an invisible button for this clam so we can just buy it without we can hit the button without having to buy the clam so once you see the shadow disappear start descending and stay over this section and you will eventually see that sandy stops moving she lands on this invisible button so now that we've landed you can walk over and descend and kick the button and then you can kind of ride against this wall to descend manually because remember you can do that to descend you can go into this box because you've already opened it jump up and descend into the spatula. Now that you've got that spatula, you can jump and descend and push into this to speed up your descent. Land in the box. And again, these boxes are really annoying. I forgot to mention earlier. Um, you'll see like right here, you can kind of walk on them. It's kind of hard to get into them because the collision is too big on the invisible parts, but yeah. Um, if you get frustrated with that, don't worry, it's something we've all been through. <laughs> it's hard to get into those boxes sometimes. So here, again, uh, we already had our grounded state, so you can jump descent. Here I was a little bit too early, but it's okay because I can grab the ledge. 
jump, descent again. Okay, see, that's what I did wrong is because I grabbed the ledge without touching the ground. See that? See, that? hopefully that gives you some more insight on what I did wrong so you can understand what I what you shouldn't do. So, yeah, we can set this up again by warping here. Touch the ground so you can descend. Yes, this glitch does work on the Switch, but keep in mind this tutorial is for PC only. A lot of these glitches you can do on the Switch and other consoles, but um, I'm only diving into how to run this on PC. Once you do this, start descending into the slide and face this direction so you get the slide speed. So this is the, how you get the fast ILH, where you use the slide momentum to move around. So when you move forward, you just run faster and get this wheel. Make sure you don't touch these platforms, otherwise you'll lose your sliding speed. And what you want to do from here, you see this little antenna here, you want to ram into the corner. So you're going to get knocked down. And make sure you don't do this for too long, because if you do it for too long, the hand will grab you. Jump and descend. So you can watch that again in full speed, in a slow speed if you don't know what happened there. But yeah, um, a lot just happened, so let me try to explain. When you hit the antenna, you, you descend faster. So you can kind of like float toward this building while not having to worry about descending too slowly. And then once you get low enough, close enough to the bus stop, you can jump and then descend to land on top of the bus stop. It takes a feel to, to get used to doing this quickly, but what you're trying to do is transform to SpongeBob while you're on top of it as Sandy like this. So that way when you fall down, you can walk over to the spatula while the bus, the bus stop camera is still going. So the camera interferes with the spatula cutscene, you can get the spatula without, collect, without watching the collection animation. So if you're getting the collection animation, that means that you were too late. The camera um, was not active anymore for switching characters by the time you collected it. Um, so it takes some time to get down. Don't worry about it if you miss it the first time you do it. But uh, one of the things I've noticed here that kind of causes a lot of problems is switching and then having the camera disorient itself and spin around while you're trying to get to the spatula. Uh, I found the best way to prevent that is by switching while you're on top of the bus stop. For some reason, it, it lets you have more control of the camera when you do that. Come here, just push slam on this. The you can enter the lighthouse. Push, 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 push. Um, this part's pretty self-explanatory. In the original game, these floors weren't clear, but here you can just look down and see where the next one is. I always use this time to replenish my underwear because this game does not keep, it doesn't um, let you keep your underwear between loads. So make sure you're kind of restocking your underwear during this time. Try to hit these duplicatatrons as early as possible so that way you don't have to fight the other robots. Get up here as quickly as possible and destroy this guy. You can try and get both of them in the same slam this way. And once you destroy these robots, you can kind of rest against the electric fence because it doesn't actually do anything to get the wheel. Here, um, this is a little bit riskier of a move because you can't enter the lighthouse from the opposite end. So if you miss this, you have to reload the lighthouse uh, here, ambushing the lighthouse to get to it again. So all you got to do for this skip is just jump over it and mash the enter button again to grab the spatula while you're entering the door. Walk back this way so you don't get the bubble buddy text box and you can jump on top of here. To get the sock. Hey, thank you for the raid. I'm in the middle of a tutorial, so I don't want to like do too much like thanking subs and stuff, but I'll thank you guys once I'm done with this. So once you get to the clam, you can buy it. Make sure you have it. This is why you were collecting shiny objects the whole time, so you have enough shiny objects to get in. And now you're in the sea needle. Yeah. So the way this game works here, uh, the devs have a counter that goes up to three. Uh, when you when you finish one of these sections of, of the tiki's being destroyed, it, the counter goes up, and once the counter hits three, you finish the segment. So this is obviously exploitable because you can just do the same one three times and get the uh, spatula for it. So just jump off and land on the top the top set of tiki's. Um, what you want to watch out for here is the two tiki's that kind of sandwich between those two at the bottom. The one here is fine because it's not going to have the physics glitch, but for the ones below this, you have the um, the, the shush tiki's, the pale ones that are sandwiched between the the, the, um, the wooden tiki. So, I want to try to destroy all these tiki's, including that one. Fall on this and do it again, and do it again. 
And you'll notice when you start hovering here that two of the tiki's they'll reappear and they'll start falling. Once they're all gone, fall down and let yourself die. And do it again. So again, kick all these. And these are all just gonna fall. And let yourself fall. This is where the real action and one more time. Make sure that you're counting to three. So you know what's going on. Um, remember, you have to destroy all the tiki's for this to work. If you don't destroy all of them, it won't work. It is really annoying and infuriating when this doesn't work, and it tells you that you don't have enough. Or he says, "Ah, there you are, boy." When you don't, when you don't get it. But yeah, if you get the, if you do this and you go back there, and he just says, "There you are," to SpongeBob, it means that you didn't get it the right way, and you have to go back and do it again. But yeah, that's the fastest way of doing it currently. Now we're gonna make our rounds around the sea needle to get the rest of the wheels. Again, this section is pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of damage boost off of this guy. Get this uh, sock and the purple shiny if you want to get that. Now here, um, if you mess this up, just know you can land on this thing here. So. I'll show you an instance where the, you might mess this up. You double jump, kick, you miss it, say you miss it, you can still, like, if you're too low, you can kind of float and land on this part here to recover it. Um, you can jump from here, you can also jump from the window as well. See how I missed it, you can just go back here and land. Good example. You can jump on this side of the window. If you need to, you can jump from the rail to kick this button. I'd say until you get used to it, start um, using the lasso hover. Um, anticipating yourself falling just so you can catch yourself, but yeah, all you gotta do is hit that button to spawn the spatulum. And if you hit all three of the bungee dives successfully, you will then go to crabs work, and he'll say good work and you get the spatula. Now we're gonna do the rest of the wheels in downtown. But remember, it is very important not to get the wheel spatula after doing this segment. We're gonna get it in the next split. So make sure you get this, jump up, grab this. And by the way, sometimes you'll have like this weird like physics thing where you jump off this in a weird, yeah, see that just happened there? Yeah, the physics <laughs> the physics in this game are just completely messed up, so. Sometimes that'll happen, just don't worry about it if it does. Just um, double jump in space, try and go in between this area here, between the fence and the building. And get the wheel. Try not to get hit because remember, your underwear carries each next segment and you want to try to preserve your underwear so pause the game warp to patrick's dilemma make sure you're sandy while you're doing this by the way you have to be sandy for this next part to work warp to patrick's dilemma and split oh i'm quick now if you did this the right way all you do is be sandy and then warp to here you'll just be sandy yeah because that's just, that's just rehydrated that's a rehydrated moment so jump on top of the uh, tree. You're probably wondering why you, we didn't get the sock earlier. This is the reason why, because we're going to set it up here. Now you can do ILH on this platform. It might be a little bit more difficult for you to get it here, but if you mess it up, that's okay. Just make sure that you're pushing into the ledge when you do it, so that way you don't get stuck on the side. If you do get stuck on the side, um, try to find a wall to rub against so you can descend, but yeah. Uh, make sure that you walk on the ledge again. Again, walk off and walk on the ledge again to regain your ability to descend. Then descend here, touch the slide, and you'll get the sliding speed. Um, now, this part I find to be pretty difficult sometimes. I'll try to teach you the method that I find easier to do. So, um, and most players doing this, I'm pretty sure the world record does it this, this way anyway. So, you want to just jump up and get around here push forward and touch this part of the rock here to stop yourself from falling. Um, if you do it the right way, you won't lose your sliding speed. So let me just actually try it again. I'll show you the way I do it too. It's, I th think it's a little bit harder, but it's around the same speed, so. We might be in this segment for a while because there are a bunch of different ways of doing it. But yeah, see how I got stuck here? You want to try to grab that ledge. 
I'll try to show you the way that most people do this trick right now. You want to jump up here. Push against this until you stop floating. And just kind of go along the side like this and you should have the sliding speed. Now what you want to watch out for here is um, there's like a little light wall here. See this light wall? You want to go around that. So now you have this, you can kind of just descend, hit these little stalagmites to push yourself down. Again, the ILH stuff is kind of weird. Once you get it down though, it feels a lot more intuitive. Go around, bend. Yeah, that's the method. I mean, that's like more or less how it's done. Um, I'll show you again how I do it, which is pretty fast as well. Again, you can always like watch the world record and like the top times to see how these strats are changing too. Because like obviously, this tutorial is just designed to get you into the game. It's not going to be like updated even a week from now. You know, it's like there are going to be new strats. But this is like the best way to get into it. If it's like if, if you want like a beginner route, this is the best way to get into it at the moment. I'll make more individual tutorials to get people into it. But uh, yeah, for now, this is like. As of today, this is like the best way of learning. And I don't see this stuff getting too outdated, and if it does, I will make another one. I'll continue making individual tutorials as well. I'll keep you guys updated on how to play. So, yeah, I'll once you do that, just go in here. And you'll get the warp from Mr. Krabs. And now we're gonna go back to downtown to get the wheel spatula. So warp to the first, the silver spatula in downtown. and get this spatula and from here I'm gonna attempt to show you some of the newer tricks go to the second spatula oh I'm quick split and we're gonna go straight to bubble buddy here because it makes you talk to him in this game you, you kind of have to you're kind of forced to uh, talk to Patrick to get the sock get the sock and wa walk backward and talk to him again to get this spatula to spawn and if you if you jump on the spatula while talking to him, you should get this thing where you like you can control the spat you can control yourself while you're talking to him. Um, you'll see it again later, but it's just an optimization. You'll when you see me do it later, you'll understand how it's done. All right, so the Robo Sandy manipulations are a lot easier in this game than they are in the original, and the fight is a lot faster paced. So the first thing you want to do, I might not get this because it is pretty tight, but you want to you want to run immediately toward her. So she attacks you, and that time I missed it, but yeah. Um, this works the same way the Sea Needle does, where it's on a counter. For the first fight, um, for the first phase of the fight, all she does is attack you, and then she jumps on you. And you want to, the goal is to get her to the jumping animation as quickly as possible. So, when she jumps on you, of course you slam to take off your health, you already know that playing the game casually. But, when she attacks you by going after you, that counts as an attack as well. So you can stop her from doing the elbow attack by making her attack you first, which sets the counter to one, and then she attacks you. So all you gotta do here is just make her attack you once. If you do it twice, it'll loop around and reset so she'll start elbowing you again. See that? All it is is a counter. So for this one, all you do is get her to attack you once, and then she'll jump on you. Now for the second phase, as you guys know, it adds the clothesline move attack, so we want to get her to attack you twice. You can use the belly thrust to get yourself out of the way. But yeah, make her attack you twice, pick it up, and try to walk toward the uh, the scoreboard as you're throwing it at it to save a little bit of time. Again, make her attack you twice. If you make her attack you three times, she'll do that. But again, because the counter is already set to one, make her attack you this time, and she'll jump on you. Does that make sense? So the counter has to be set to two. If it goes over three, it resets back to zero. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Her head always goes toward the middle. Right, so, yeah, also a good point. Thank you, Josh. Um, Josh, the current world record holder, giving tips right now. He says that the head always goes toward the middle of the stage, so 
you want to run to the middle of the stage when you grab the head, so... Thank you, Josh, for adding that in. Appreciate that. Alright, so... Again. She'll attack you twice. If, if she accidentally attacks you three times, just do it again. And she should jump on you. Oh, my bad. I, I miscounted. So that time I had to do it an extra time after that because... The one that I overwrote was the was the slam attack, so yeah, you gotta pay attention to that stuff. Okay. You can kinda just attack this as soon as you can possibly see it, so again, I'll, I'll show you the mistake again. That time I had it. That time is one too many. If I do it two more times after that, she should jump on me. See? Just gotta keep track of it, so the counter's at one now, the counter's at two, the next one should be three. She jumps on you at three, and then you can just bash it. Oh, I'm quick! That was in a tube. What? That sounded, that sounded so weird. I don't know if you guys heard that, but yeah. Okay, so, Tree Dome. You want to try to conserve as much health here as possible. You don't want to get hit here. Start off by bowling this duplicated charm with a fully charged bowl. Wait for it to hit, and then hit the tartar sauce guy with the bubble bowl. If I did that the right way, I would have been able to hit him into the duplicate. Let's just start this over so you guys don't... You guys know how to do it. Alright, starting over. Make sure you hit him. Okay, make sure you hit him with this bowling ball and he'll knock up onto that and destroy the duplicator. It's a pretty easy way of doing it. Again, all this is pretty self-explanatory after that. Now, once you do this, we're going to teach you how to do these spatula collections during the loading screens. If you want to make this easy for yourself, just turn the camera up like this until you get used to it, but stand in front of the door, and you want to just press the bowling button and then the exit button immediately after. Bowl exit, and you can walk into the spatula during this loading screen. Because when the bubbles are on the screen, the game is not actually loading. I'll show you it again. It's really easy timing, it's not frame perfect or anything like that. All you do is just press the B and then RB, and it works, as long as you do it during the bowling animation. And you can walk around during that black screen, and you can collect the spatula Let during it. Again, we can kind of hop over here. This will do a weird thing where it stops you from using the sponge ball. So what I usually do is I, as I leave the sponge ball by pressing B before I get here to keep walking so it doesn't wall me off. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to enter Google Lagoon. So, uh, I think you can jump on this one here. Yeah, you can, you can jump on this wall here. It's one of the ways of doing it. You can do it this way, or you can jump up on the wall this way. Stay off this area here, because if you stay on for too long, the handle will grab you. It's a huge pain. Now you can go over here, talk to Larry, and we're just going to connect the towers. What I do to make sure I'm not wasting any time at all, because you can jump and bash in midair, unlike the original game where you can't do that. I try to jump and then bash to conserve a little bit of time each time. That way you don't have to like wa wait for him to go all the way up from the ground up to the top. Just saves us a little bit of time each time you do it. So again, I'm going to jump to it and then bash. Uh, if he's not here, you can do a jump spin, jump the space over this, no problem. Goes without saying, but if you've never played this game casually, you have to hit the towers in this order for it to work. If you have enough health here, you can damage boost off him, but keep in mind your health is um, transferring from each level, so careful. Um, one of the things you can do here is space a jump spin, jump spin to get to this cliff here. Money. And you can just get over here to Mrs. Puff. The muscle bar is kind of weird to jump on sometimes. What I usually do here is jump spin, jump spin. But you can do jump spin, jump as well. We're going to make our way over to the sand castle. Remember that because this is rehydrated, you can use the spin twice before descending. So you can use that to your advantage there. Now over here, you can double jump and spin to get on top of this castle like this, and you can jump out of that. So it's actually really easy, super lenient. Just like most tricks in this game, you can just kind of like look at it and do it. Pretty simple. Again, keep your health in mind here. Don't hit the Thunder Tiki if you can't, but you want to be getting as many shiny objects along the road as possible. 
here you can just do another jump spin jump and make sure you get the checkpoint now there are a couple ways of doing this um, I'll show you a couple of ways what you're trying to do here is jump from the duplicator to get on top of the planks this one's a little bit more precise so if you miss it no big deal the plank will come down wait for the plank to bob up and stop moving and then do a jump a bash uh, slam to get on top but you can do it that way um, another way of doing this is using a vertical ball boost jump um, I'm not really sure if we're calling it a boost because this doesn't give you a boost but all you have to do is get in this corner and get stuck face the place where the plank is intersecting with the shadow of this little dark area here it's like a little gray line and all you gotta do is tap the ball button tap jump as quickly as possible I wasn't fast enough that time That wasn't supposed to happen. So I guess I'll just, uh... <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I'd never seen that happen before, but... I mean, I found this alternative on my stream yesterday, so I wasn't like... It's not like I've done it a million times, but yeah. Um... <clears throat> pretty new trick. Under 24 hours old. <laughs> if you don't like that jump and waiting for that thing, you can just do it this way, though. And that also wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Just an alternative to doing it. This is how I do it whenever I play the game. It happened again. You know what? Just don't do this. Just, just don't do it. Just don't do it. That's my suggestion. Um, pro tip. Don't do that. Space it the right way, you can get on top of that anyway. Um, now from here you can get the sock and do it again. This, this jump spacing might take some time to get down. If you fall and die, it doesn't matter because you'll checkpoint over there. If for some reason you do want to do that weird bowling thing that I was showing you, uh, make sure that you just get the checkpoint over there or you'll die and respawn by the sandcastle. Keep your health in mind. Right now I only have one health left, so I'm just going to do this and uh, make sure I don't get hit. Now, to do this trick, it's pretty simple to see whether you got it or not, and pretty easy to set up too. You want to line up your feet on top of this little purple clam or lavender clam, whatever you prefer, and face this little pink clam that's between... Right, so you see how there's like a clam where my nose is right here? My nose is over this clam. My nose is over this clam. You want to do the clam in between. This pink clam that my nose is over right here. So keep an eye on it. Again, keep an eye on this clam. And you want to walk all the way back here to this purple clam and line up your bowling shot to be on this pink clam. So you can do it while you're bowling as well. Make sure you do a fully charged bowling shot from there. And if you do it correctly, you'll hit the button and the trampolines pop up. So again, I'll do it again just to show you. Fully charged bowling shot. So hold down the bowling button while you're facing this. Did it the right way you can bash over here to see it hits the button just like that i didn't mean to fall off like that but that's fine i can show you it again in action if you want to see it again okay if you fail that all you got to do is this pretty easy If you have enough health, you can hit this, and then you can just face here. Just like that. I'd say make sure you hit it before you jump down. But once you do, um, you can jump on top of these tiki's or jump off the castle, whichever one you prefer to land on top of the spatula. Because in this game, the, the cutscene initiates as soon as you touch it. You don't have to worry about landing next to it and walking into it like in the original. All you gotta do is just land on top of it. And you'll respawn down here as well. So which again, you want to do this. You might, you might miss it, you might not. If you miss it... Just like that. Activate the tiki's to get shiny objects and we're gonna enter the caves. Um... I'm going to show you what I do here, 
just to, to streamline this and make it pretty easy to learn. If you make this cycle, the, the platform should be at the top. You can double jump spin. Don't do it on the edge of the platform because it'll sometimes shoot you into the ground if you do that. But make sure that the platform... Notice how the water goes up and down. That the goo goes up and down, right? You want to make sure that uh, the goo is all the way up before you do that jump so that the buoy is at the high point. Again, activating these tiki's along the way to make sure we have enough shiny objects. And there's a sock out in the distance there. You're going to double jump spin to it. Get the sock and watch this rock over here. When the goo goes down to its lower level, you're going to jump on it and jump spin, jump spin to the bridge. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is one of the more risky maneuvers in this level. I'm going to attempt to collect the spatula during the loading screen, but as you can see, you have all this junk in the way. So, you have to kind of just know what you're doing, know like where to jump, when to space your jumps, and so forth. So what I usually do is I make sure that it's lined up with Spongebob like this and walk up this way and make sure I have it the right way. Again, if you don't want to do this, you can just collect the spatula and leave. But again, I'm going to give it a shot. Press B. If you hear the little popping noise, that means you got the spatula. So if I go back in here and I'll show you. I did hear the popping noise, but to show you, we were able to collect the spatula during the loading zone. Because remember, the, when the bubbles are on the screen, the game's not actually loading. It's just a little... Splash image you just see. Well, not a splash image, but yeah. If you use space jumps the right way here, you can touch this box just barely. You can touch the box, the box trigger, and open it. Yeah, these boxes can be kind of annoying because you just like again rehydrated moment, you just kind of stand on them. You gotta, like, land in the right spot to get into them. Destroy the robots to get the spatula later. Don't skip this. Make sure you destroy them. The pier has some other strategies you can do to, uh, to skip spatulas and stuff, so we're gonna skip both these spatulas. If you miss either of them, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't miss the bungee one, but this one's a little bit, you know, it requires more effort to do. You want to jump so you're like just under the pier to trigger the hand. I'll, I'll do it again. If you miss it, just grab the spatula and, and die just like this and you'll respawn. Pretty simple. But I'll attempt to show you the spatula skip here as well. Well, if you jump high enough, you can just touch the- there's like a hand trigger under there and you can just touch it. I don't really know how to do it, but uh, yeah. It's not that important if you're trying to learn the game right now. I don't really want to waste your time. If you jump on this sheet here, you should be able to get up. Be careful because you can't use another jump here, so um... You kind of just have to go straight to the bungee. Just like this. Grab this. Warp to slip and slide under the pier. Again, you want to use the belly thrust to get your way through these levels faster. Pause the game and warp to slip and slide under the pier. Yes, you can belly in midair. All right. Now we're just going to finish the tower puzzle. Again, unlike, unlike the original game, you can actually walk through these. They're just a solid object in the original. And here we are. Congratulations.
Now, we're gonna activate this, this uh, oversight in the game called Collectible Counter Abuse. This was in the original game, but it was a glitch, it was a frame perfect glitch on the Xbox version actually, but um... To do this, all you have to do is warp to downtown to set your wheel number to 11. You just have 11 wheels. If you, if you do that and warp back to save the children, the counter for the collectibles, the memory transfers from that level to this one, and the game thinks that you've already completed this because you had the 11 wheels from... It's not going to show graphically, but yeah, the memory... For like this, you have 11 wheels is set, so because the number is greater than 6, or greater than 5 rather in this area, uh, you just get the spatula for free. That's it. Now you've done everything in Goo Lagoon, pause the game, warp to top of the pineapple. And I'm going to show you guys um, quick. Um, the easiest way to get around the hub. There's another way of doing this that's really inconsistent right now. The world record uses. Uh, I guess I could try to show you that, but it'd take forever, so I'll show you it in a different video probably. This is a really easy one to do. All you have to do here is do a double jump spin to the little, um, the, the clamsicle thing over there, so. That's it. That's, that's all you do. And you should be able to walk out of bounds. Just follow this path and you should get around pretty easily. You do this now? Okay, yeah, even the world record holder just does this now. So I'll show you the easy way to do this. So once you get around, you can go over and jump up onto these rocks to get to the dumpster back there. Um, but there is another way of doing this as well. It's pretty fast too, so if you're if you're up for spending a little bit more time learning, you can do this pretty easily as well. So from here you want to jump from this pole area to like on top of this cliff. And be careful, because if you go too far out here, you will get grabbed by the hand. So you want to jump just on the corner, just like this. Do not go any farther into this, otherwise you'll get grabbed. Jump from there, up to the top of the cliff here. Just like that. You can jump around this way. And jump over to get to the dumpster. If you rewatch, you'll see going under and around is pretty similar. But, um, yeah, you can do it either way. The one that I just showed you is faster. If you didn't see what just happened there, if you hit the dumpster and jump on top, the sock is there. So, yeah. Make sure you get that sock. You should have 10 socks at this point. Alright, so to get on top of the chum bucket, again, just jump spacing. Here, this jump might take a little bit of time to get down, but um, if you fall off like this, I guess, sometimes you won't be able to get back on the chum bucket. Which is why when I when I used to practice this to get um, used to doing it in runs, I would just do it like around here. So if I fell off, I could just land on top of the B. The B. And then jump on top like that. I'd also recommend Yes, this will be on YouTube. Jump over here to get this underwear. Because we need this for grinding later when we get the rest of the shiny objects we need. And uh, here again, here's another example of a text box where there's just one... There's just one text. And there's one piece of text and you can hold B to skip. So obviously don't do that. Just press A or confirm. Again, mess around with whatever you're comfortable with. Now my dream strats are consistent, but obviously there are there are like harder options and like faster options. But I'm gonna show you what I usually do to get through dream. Um, this this is a trick that everybody does. All you gotta do is stand around here on this um, this platform, jump, bash, slam, and you should get the spatula. 
Now this is probably the hardest trick in the run that I'm going to show you. There's nothing in the run that really comes close to this in difficulty, I'd say. Uh, to set it up consistently, what I usually do is um, reload the level. Yeah, oil skip in this game is challenging just like it is in the original game. So, you want to get up here as fast as possible, get to the wheel, and what I usually look for here, once he stops moving, you have a lot of time to set this up, he's not going to move around, he's in a set position. I like to put my feet, if you can kind of see, here, the bowling pin and this little dot, I try to put him right around here relative to the bowling ball on the, um, on this uh, paddle, the image there. I gotta get up there again now, but yeah. If you die, it should be set back to the exact state it was in before, so it's easy to get up here. So again, put your, your feet to line up with the tip of the bowling pin and the dot here, and turn this pole to line it up to cut off half the burger in the distance here. The Krabby Patty should be halfway cut like this around there. Now, if you're listening to the oil bot right now, he has the audio cue where, um, did you hear that? So, I'm gonna do my best to explain this. Here it goes, ch -ch -ch. the second part of that noise, you, you're gonna jump on that. So listen again. The second part, the second part indicates that the that the that the shot is coming. Um, so again, you need to have your audio on to do this trick to know when the the audio cue is coming. As soon as you hear it, you want to start running and jumping. So. Just to give you an idea of what you're looking for so it makes sense. Like, that was a successful oil skip, but I want to make sure that you understand what you're looking for as I'm going through explaining this. So, when he shoots his, his shot, you want to start running, and when you get to the edge of the paddle, you want to jump. Jump, spin, jump in a straight line while you have it set up this way. Just like that. But... The key here to get your jump back is you're probably wondering, well, you got hit and you used both your jumps, so how are you getting your jump back? The reason why my jump is back is because I landed on top of the oil. So if you don't get it, if you don't get your jump back, it means you didn't land on top of the oil. It means you got hit by it. You want to land on top of the oil, which will still give you damage, but you want to land on top of it so you get your jump back. Again, it's pretty consistent if you know how to do it. It's going to take a lot of time to get down. It may take you a couple of days of practice and get this down. And it's going to be super annoying at first, but the alternative is just grinding shiny objects. And instead, um, if, you, if, you, if you cannot do this, I will show you an alternative, by the way. So don't worry. If you can't get this, don't worry about it. So again, I'll tell you when to go. Go. Again, um, it's hard to, to talk and do this at the same time, but I'll just, I'll, you know what, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just say go when I hear the audio cue that tells me to go. So you guys know what to go, when, when to go, what to, what to listen for. Go. Alright, you can replay that again and um, get an idea of what the audio cue is that I'm looking for. There we go. Make sure that you stop yourself, by the way, because sometimes if you're sliding too far, you'll just fall off the ledge and you have to do it again. Just be very careful not to get hit off. And keep in mind that while you're in the, load the fake loading screen, you can still get hit by that thing, so just be careful. Alright. Now, you can pause the game and warp back to the beginning. And if you do this um, as quickly as possible, you'll make the cycle for Super Bounce Skip. Again, the reason why I reload the level between Oil Skip and Super Bounce Skip is so the level is always the same state. When I start doing this, it makes it very consistent. 
So you want to run out to the edge of the slide, past this little hump here, jump, and if you push forward, you should be able to land on that every single time. Now, again, um, as I was saying earlier, if you're having trouble with oil skip, don't worry. The alternative is going to you know, Tiki's Go Boon, the place you, you can see it in the picture here, the place where we, we got all the, we, we destroyed all the Tiki's and got all the shiny objects from. You can just make your rounds, bash into these Tiki's um, multiple times to grind shiny objects here, and then purchase this clam, purchase that clam down there to get the Patrick stream without having to do oil skip. You can do that. You shouldn't lose that much time if you're new, and you, you can always learn oil skip during the learning process as you're getting better at the game. So, yeah. Now I'm going to show you how to do Squidward's dream. For heaven's sake. You don't have to do these tight jumps. Just, I'm just showing you they're possible if you want to do them. Uh, trumpet jump. You ha you're, you have a limited time to do this jump because the, the notes are obviously going to fall. But what I do here is jump, spin, jump to get to the trumpet. You want to aim for the body. And it will feel weird for a bit, but it's pretty consistent once you get it down. Um, I'll do it again just to show you um, what not to do, actually. Oops. Um, if you want to jump before you touch the edge, because if you touch the edge, it'll send you off like this. Or rather, if you touch the edge of the note, it'll kind of like make you stick to it, kind of. Or kind of push you off to the side. So make sure you're jumping before you touch the edge of the note. I find that to be the most consistent, so. Again, that, that time I just delayed my spin because I was thinking about what I was doing. But let me show you. Let me tell you what I'm doing before I do it just so I can get it and show you how to do it. So jump before you touch the edge of the note. Jump, spin, jump. Oh, again, it's been a rough night, so yeah. Do not jump as you're on the edge. Just make sure you jump before you touch the edge of the note. So here you can just jump, bash, and slam to get the sock. And as the as the trampoline's coming, double jump and slam, and you'll just go on top of it. Now you can make this all in one motion too, and I'll actually show you that now. I'll show you it all in one motion. Now that I'm dead, I can show you it. One cycle. Be careful because you can't move your camera while you're on a trampoline like that. Get the sock, double jump, slam. You should make it on every single time. Now, luckily for you, there's a checkpoint here, so if you mess any if you mess anything up beyond this point, you can just get the checkpoint. If you're not going to make the cycle, you can recognize that pretty early and just jump on it from here. And even from back here, you can still make this with a jump spin jump, so don't be afraid to do that. Uh, keep in mind, these notes move really quickly, so just be careful. Don't get complacent with it. Just make sure you're being careful when you're first learning. Work on speed after you know the patterns and stuff. Now this next segment I'm going to teach you is another ILH segment, but you should be able to do it pretty easily. Maybe not as quickly as I'm doing it, but you should be able to get, at least get across and learn this stuff as you're, uh, you're new here. So. Now be careful because um, if you miss the sledge grab, you'll fall for a while before you get grabbed again. So uh, ILH again. Again, if you're not getting it, easy thing to do is just jump and use RT to kind of reset it. Again, I'll show you again what that looks like. Oh, I warped the wrong level. It's a muscle memory from the original game there. Which I've been playing a lot of lately, so yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to reset the lasso thing to make sure you're not just missing the inputs, just jump and hold LT and do it again on the ledge. And then you can just run off here. You can 
run on the slide, go straight to the acorn. Sometimes if you're fast enough, you can grab the spatula while you're being grabbed. But make sure you do not grab the ledge while you're grabbing this because you will soft lock in place if you do that. Just make sure you jump above the ledge and grab the spatula. Now, you can fall off and set up an ILH here. Again, I just missed it. I'm gonna make sure that it's not just the my inputs and do that to reset it. There you go. Make sure you land on here again to regain your yeah. jump. Because you need that for later, otherwise you'll keep sinking. So descend here onto the slide. From here, just kind of turn around, go under this and run along the bottom side of it for a tiny little bit. And then you're gonna turn around and face the Alamo. Just kind of go in this direction for a while until you get to the edge. I'll put the directory path for the frame rate cap in the description, yeah. And then you, because you had your jump from the acorn, you can jump and then descend to land here. Yeah, I'm a little bit above right now, but that's okay. Just because we haven't landed yet doesn't mean we can't. Just make sure you do not get hit, otherwise you'll ascend. Just make sure, be very careful not to get hit here. This part may be frustrating to learn, but you'll get through it, don't worry. Just be careful not to get hit. Um, yeah, yeah, there is a way to descend here, though. Um, you can kind of touch the corners, I think, right? Actually, there's a more consistent way of doing this. You can do it against the cactus here. See so yeah, how the cactus is a curved surface? Just, uh, you can do it against the cactus. Um, this worked the last time I did it. I don't know why it's not working now. There we go. Just kind of rub against this and you should be able to get it. If you can't do that, um, my suggestion is to jump. Be very careful not to mess this up, but uh, yeah. You want to grab, and I messed it up. What you're trying to do is grab the swinger. I'll just try and try it again. Yeah, you already have the box open, so if you mess this up at any point, you can just jump in it and do this whole thing again. I'll show you the alternative, by the way, just so, just while we're here, I can just show you, if you're having trouble with the other method, you can just do it this way. So again, start, start descending here. And once you get to this swinger, hold it and pay attention to, because again, uh, in this game, you have to actually hold the swingers. On your way down, Make sure, you do, make sure you let go when you're being sent down. You can just kind of walk around. You can kind of do that to destroy him. Um, I'd recommend actually doing this first so they don't respawn. But yeah. Sandy's lasso is super powerful in this game, so make sure you're using it to your advantage. And again, try as hard as you can not to get hit. But yeah, if you happen to, um, if you happen to get stuck in the air, look up to the Texas Swinger. Make sure it's like right here. You can kind of just grab it on your way up. And do it again. And do it again. Well, I had to jump that time, but you know what I mean. You, you saw me do it earlier. I don't want to take up any more of your time, so yeah. Just showing alternatives. But once you're done with this, you can just uh, teleport to Jellyfish Fields. Go back to Jellyfish Fields, uh, the Silver Spatula, and you can. Oh, I'm quick! Split. So, fully charge a bowling shot here because you can hit these with a bowling ball, by the way. No, this does not work in the original game, and if it did anyway, we still have the light clips to do stuff, so you know. If you try to do that in OG BFB, it's not going to work. And, um, I don't know, I've had people ask, like, can you do this in the other game, too? It's like, no. 
This game is entirely new, it's built on an entirely different engine, so finding a glitch in this game does not transfer to the original. We already know most of how that game works already, so uh, basic stuff like that is not going to work in this game just because it looks like Battle for King Bottom. So, just to clear that up, I've had people ask that before. And even if it did work, we'd still be lag clipping anyway, so yeah. Uh, you want to try to make this bowling shot go a little bit more to the right of this fountain spout. The little, I guess, like, place where the water would come out. So, yeah. Also, I just noticed that the water doesn't actually go out of the fountains, so, uh, yeah, that's something. Um, so, pause the game. Once you do that, you'll collect the spatula during the cutscene. Just work here. Now we're going to do some grinding. SBA is not in this game either. Well, you can do SBA, but it's like basically useless because you got to do it outside the machine in the 10 hole and it's super slow. Make sure that you, you touch the, this wall to make sure you get the checkpoint. Um, the checkpoint isn't exactly here, but I just say do that to make sure you get it. And do not buy this clam no matter what you do. There's a glitch in this game where if you buy this clam, it's not a glitch, it's an oversight. So when you buy the clam, Every time you die and respawn, it reopens the gate and it makes you rebuy it every time. So every time you die, you take a 150 death toll. So do not buy this clan no matter what you do. You'll lose a lot of time doing that. And now all we're going to do is just rinse and repeat for a little bit. Uh, we're going to do this until we hit around almost 6,000. Uh, if you're new, I'd recommend just doing one extra. Get into like the mid 6,000s just so you don't have to you know, worry about anything. But as you get more experience, just do one fewer. You know, it's pretty simple. I feel like a new sponge. So just keep doing this over and over again. Um, well, now I'm just going over 6,000 just to make sure that we have enough. So yeah. You only have to go to like like mid 5,000s and you can get away with that, but yeah. I also forgot to mention up until this point that you can... Jumping in this game only has one set height, which can be jarring for people who are used to traditional 3D platformers, but for this game, it makes it easier to, um, I guess easier to platform around because you don't have to worry about holding down the button to get maximum jumps. In the original game, I knew that was a problem a lot of people have, was like holding down the jump button to make sure you have the maximum height. I know it's something people struggle with at some points, but uh, yeah. In this game, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I personally don't prefer that, but some people might find it easier to play, and the game is, you know, pretty accessible, so it kind of fits where the, you know, it's a pretty easy game to get into, and it's easy to learn the movement, so yeah. Um, with that in mind, make sure that you're, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can interrupt them to make them go, like, lower. If you, like, a jump spin, you can get, like, a, an artificial lower height. You can, you can jump very quickly after to kind of lower your jumps a little bit. Um, you'll see I'll kind of do that here. Do like a, two very quick jumps to do an artificial lower jump to get on top like that. If you fail that, no problem. You can just reset and go again. Like um, jump in the goo and drown and then re and redo that. So you can always do that. So you can jump. Yeah, I've previously been pretty critical about the jump height thing, but I found it to be easier for people to learn, so... At least this game has that. So, yeah. Um, if you jump... Here, it kind of slides you out. That's why I jump. Just to let you know, like... You, you can't really do this, so... Jump here first, double jump up here. You can do that. You can also, when you're against this wall, you can jump bash and then do that to kind of, like, get a quicker boost up the wall. When I do this, I usually jump down here to avoid the tartar sauce and then jump up here. Well, again, ev pretty much every platformer ever that I've played has the ability to hold down the jump button, even b dating back to the original Mario Bros. in the 80s, but even the original version of this game has that. So, I'm just saying that for people who are new to platformers and new to speedrunning, it makes it easier for them to get into it. And I think they did this with kids in mind too, because kids might not realize you have to do that either, so. 
From here, there are two ways of doing this. You can bounce off his head and bash into the trigger, or you can jump on the sign, jump, bash, and it should work. Yeah. Again, guys, I'm not trying to start a controversy over a jump height. I prefer having dynamic jumping as well, as I think most people do, but it is the way it is in this game. They're not going to change it, and there's nothing you can do about it, so you might as well just accept it and learn to work with it instead of against it. You know, There's no point in being negative about it. I mean, the bright side is that it makes setting up certain tricks with jumping consistent, so you never have to worry about it ever being a variable. And some people like that, you know? It's just preference. Alright. Make sure you're collecting shiny objects along the way by destroying tiki's. You can grab this sock down here. And I'd say j wait till you're at the edge of the slide to jump here because you gotta space it a little bit. Now pause the game and warp to top of the hill. Trade into Squidward. Get the trade in the jelly of Squidward. Okay, now I'm gonna pause the game and warp to the Mermel Lair. Or warp to, excuse me, warp to on top of Shady Shoals to go to- Oh, I am quick! Do I have two instances of Live Split open right now? It's like really weird. Okay, so to do this, jump on top of the fountain and slam. Don't do what I just did, make sure that you're on top. That leads into my next point. Make sure you're actually on top of this. jump into the sock. Now what I do here to set up this trick, you can fully charge a bowling ball. You don't have to, but you can. To jump on it and then pop up here. This is called vertical ball boosting. We kind of saw a taste of this earlier, but this one's not. This one actually is consistent. You want to walk on the ball for a little bit before jumping to make sure you get enough height. If you jump on it, if you jump off of it too early, you might not get enough height. But yeah, you can do this for a little bit. Just a little tap and you can do that. Um, make sure that you adjust your camera angle before jumping on top of this little pipe because you cannot adjust your camera angle after jumping on top of it. So you line this up by going on the edge of the pipe here, do two jumps and a spin to get on top. Again, this, this jump can be a little bit tight So jump to the side. What you want to do is jump to the side of the window and then push to the left. So like that, and then you can jump up here. You might not see yourself land, but the game still lets you land because there's collision there. You just jump up and get the spatula. Wow. And they can turn the camera and bowl because in this game, the bowling also kind of snaps you forward. It's kind of awkward and weird, but once you get used to it, it's not as bad. Right. Just grab the sock and now press A and hold B to skip. Now, I will not be teaching the ballroom skip in this video. You might be wondering if you watched my run with the ballroom skip. Um, most people aren't doing it in runs right now. I think that Josh only started doing it in runs today. Josh being the current world record holder. Um, it's still pretty inconsistent, so I won't be teaching it. I'll do a separate video on it when it's a lot more figured out. For this, um, this ledge grab, you probably remember this from the original game. Here it's a bit different. When you jump to this ledge, you want to kind of angle the control stick in this way. You see which way SpongeBob's facing. So jump to it and pull to the left. Um, I didn't. Again, I'm, it's hard for me to do this when I'm trying to explain it while doing it. But yeah. Just like that. You kind of see me pulling to the left. And here you can do another one of these things where you get the spatula during the loading screen. So pull, pull back. You heard a little thing, and that means you got it. Make sure you hit the, the edge of this paddle, otherwise it doesn't work. I found that very frustrating when I was new to the game. Hitting the edge of the paddle doesn't really make that work. So uh, you have to hit it. I mean, hitting the, the middle of it doesn't make it work, so make sure you hit the edge. 
Speaking of the edge, we're going to walk on the edge with this melon to avoid doing this puzzle. Just be careful not to let the melon break or fall off like I did just there. And you can just fall off like that to reset this. Toss this and you can just jump. Um, one thing I've noticed if you do this here, the animations in this game do not line up with the attacks. They're kind of scripted. so if you jump and then you walk up to it, sometimes they'll break if you do the, um, attack, so I would recommend not doing a, a hump attack, a second one. Do the first one and just grab it, otherwise you'll sometimes accidentally break it. If you try it for yourself, it might happen to you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, here you just kind of kind of avoid the cannonballs and Just fall off and you're good to go Well, actually once you do that you don't have to fall off you can just pause the game Warp to downtown again because we're gonna set up another collectible counter abuse here and Then just pause the game and warp to The funnel machines now, all you have to do here to set up this next trick is talk to Mermaid Man. You'll get, it. get the spatula. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now we're going to switch to Spongebob. And we're going to jump off the ledge right under just like this. <laughs> and you should respawn up here on top of the computer. Who knows why? Just make sure you hit this, this uh, button to unlock the prawn over there. The prawn. And just talk to the computer while you're falling off like this. Uh, if you do it correctly, you'll get the spatula and you'll be able to control yourself and walk into the spatula while you're doing it. Uh, you can watch a full run of the game to see it for yourself, but it's a little small optimization. Now this next part, um, I would recommend just getting rid of the robots here just so you can learn it. But once you get better at it, you can do it with the chuck here. So in this game, as you know, the LT button, which is all the LT trigger, which is also used to do the Sandy Lasso storage thing, can also be used to sneak. So if you hold this down, you can sneak automatically while these uh, tiki's are here. So what you can do is. Um, Sneak and while you're sneaking jump spin and then jump now You want to let go of this because obviously if you do this sneaking the whole time It's gonna look something like this where you're not getting far. Oh wait, actually Yeah, okay, so if you do if you're hold if you're sneaking the entire time You're not gonna make it Cuz uh, yeah So what you want to do is only sneak for the duration that you're on top of the tiki's and let go as soon as you as soon as you jump let go so holding LT, um, jump, and then spin jump again. Again, like, um, again, the, the big thing here is make sure that you're not holding LT for too long. As soon as you jump, let go of it so you can get, you can regain your speed. Now, pay attention to this guy here is floating over the turret. It's floating over here. Make sure that it's going away. Now face this angle and charge a fully charged bowling shot into this corner. Um, Make sure you're getting it stuck into the stalagmite here. Um, again, I'm not. I'm gonna do it again without talking, so I can show you how it looks. But yeah, that time it did. Um, maybe it's like this. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So it's been a couple of days since I've done this, so you want to make sure that you're facing the stalagmite in the corner like this. Just like that. Pretty easy. If you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy. And we're again, if you don't want to do this, collect the spatula and then you can warp to the third spatula here. But we're going to skip the spatula animation because it's a tutorial, so we're going to do this again. B, enter, and walk back. All you got to do. Now just pause the game. Whichever way you collect the spatula, pause the game and warp to shut down the security system. Now in Prawn, I'm just going to explain this now. I'll wait till we get there actually, so you don't get confused. 
but yeah. Why didn't I press the bowling switches? Because we've already gotten the spatula for it. We use collectible counter abuse to skip the bowling switches. It's a trick. <clears throat> Okay, now to for each of these it, it's again a counter so if you jump over this twice The counter goes to two and you can therefore bowl him Be careful not to let the bowl hit the edges of these red tiles by the way because it will break and you have to go through another cycle Here you gotta jump over it three times one two three You'll see this will come down now One, two, three, watch out for these guys. Four. Now I've done it four times. And you should be able to finish now. By the way, as far as I can tell, these uh, tiles are RNG. Maybe there's like a weird manipulation for it, but um, I don't want to outright say they're RNG because the game's still new and we don't know exactly how it works, but uh, yeah. Uh, I've noticed that it's not a consistent spot each time. You gotta kind of react to it. So there's no pattern. In the original game, there's a pattern for it, but, uh... No, for this one, there's no pattern. As, as far as I can't see, As far as I can tell. Now that we're done with the Mermelay, you can pause the game. Uh, go to Bikini Bottom and warp to On Top of Shady Shoals. Now walk back and get the sponge ball because it makes you travel faster, jump on the taxi pad and enter it. These guys aren't nearly as intimidating in this game, you just kind of just jump over and uh, yeah, they don't really attack you. Okay. Here's a little shiny here. You can, you can bowl this for shinies if you need extra ones. Just keep that in mind. Now here, we're going to go over the sponge ball. Fall off the cliff. Get the sock and um, jump. Press B, jump again to go in here and get the sock here. And pause the game, warp back to swing along spatula. Really fast socks. Definitely worth getting. Now we're just going to go back and get the same sponge ball again, but this time we're going to go over here and leap over to this and leap off of this and then press B and switch to Sandy. Now there's actually, there's another way of doing this if you don't get that the first time. You can actually climb the wall. I'll show you an easier way of doing it. And if you fail, you can always just grab the sponge ball here as well. You've just met the sponginator. Just mash A to climb up and just jump up like this. Press B and then A twice. You grab the spatula as Sandy. Now just like most of us did when we were kids playing this game, you can just do this whole thing as Sandy as well, but there's a little bit of a twist on it this time. If you hit all these buttons on cycle, you should have no trouble with these turrets getting in your way. Turret will stop shooting and you'll be able to jump on this. Set up an ILH on this little thing again. If you miss it, try resetting it this way and do it again. All you gotta do is grab the ledge and press LT while you're grabbing the ledge. Now you want to regain your jump. Um, if you get hit by that lamp, that's the lantern, that's fine. You just jump and descend anyway because we're going here. Um, then you're gonna jump again and descend onto this part and kind of hug the wall and walk through the lasers this way. Jump across and descend again. Get the suck. 
There's no trick to that, by the way. All I do is just walk through. Hug the wall to descend faster. And when you touch this little can, it'll send you down faster as well if you touch the tip of it. And, uh, yeah, once you touch tips, you gotta pause and go to the museum again. And just exit out the back. Now we're gonna switch to Sandy, because we went back to SpongeBob. Switch back to Sandy, and we're just gonna go over to set up another ILH. I would recommend just doing the LT thing here just to reset it to make sure this works. If you fail it, you'll checkpoint nearby so it's not a problem. Again, typical ILH stuff. I forgot the split. Well, we're going to split going... The split that we're going to do is, um... You're going to split going to uh, Shady Shoals before the Mermel Oh, I'm quick! forgot to mention that. Sorry for not splitting. My bad. But yeah. This is all very typical ILH stuff. So. Typical ILH stuff. Just going to float over to the end of this. Well, the reason why there are angry comments on the IGN video is because one of their reviewers gave a bad review to the game and they're saying they're spineless for doing the devs react, but they gotta understand that IGN's a pretty big company and multiple people work there, so it's not like it's the same person who gave the game a bad review who's doing that whole thing, you know? It's not the same. So, um, again, BR, and then just walk into it. Easy. Very easy. In the original game, most of these are frame perfect, but um, in this game, it's very lenient. Anybody can do it. It's accessible, you know. All right. So again, check your underwear. You want to check your underwear before you go down the slide for multiple reasons. And, uh, mostly because you don't want to die, and you also want to start grinding shiny objects. So once you're down to one. Uh, you can jump straight to the platform with a chuck, but if you want to make it easier, you can just jump here. Get the spatula. Again, I find the jump straight to the chuck pretty easy, but if you're afraid of doing it, uh, don't bother try- I mean, I just, I just said don't bother trying. What I meant to say is, if you're afraid of doing it, don't worry about doing it. I'll just show you how to do it again, if you want to see it. Did not mean to say don't bother trying. It's misspeak. Um, yeah, I'll just show you this again. I'll show you the chuck jump. Again, it's pretty easy, but when I was learning the game, I found it pretty intimidating for, like, the first time I did it, so, um, just gotta kind of do it. Space to jump well. You should. It's pretty easy, actually, yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know why I made a big deal about that. It's not a big deal. All right. This is all pretty simple stuff. Jump on the robot's head just like we did in Goo Lagoon. If you need extra shiny objects, you can do... You can just lasso that over here if you want to. Now, the rhythm for doing this is B-A-B-A. -B -A. What I typically do is uh, slide from B to A repeatedly like this. So, that's all I'm doing. I'll show you it again, just so you can see. That's it. Pretty easy stuff, so just uh, lasso, BA, 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 jump, and then glide over here. If you're low on underwear, just make sure you lasso this guy because I've seen before sometimes this guy will uh, try to attack you and you'll get hit before you get the checkpoint. Because the checkpoint, you gotta walk all the way over here. Make sure you get this checkpoint, by the way. Don't miss that checkpoint. And from here, we're just gonna go over to this lasso swinger. Um, you can, like, swing up. Texas barbecue sauce. Go straight up here. 
Hit this button if you face this corner just like that. Oh, wait, I forgot. Okay, so from that laser, you want to actually go straight to here. I'll just, I'll show you again. You okay? You look okay, so I actually did forget something. On the way back from this laser... So you're coming back, right, from, from this laser up here. You jump down here. I'll just go up there just so there's minimum confusion. So you hit the button, right? Hit the button, you jump down, and go straight to the sock over here. Let's get the sock. Ooh. Do I really have to carry Patrick's socks? Oh yeah, for the sandy for the sandy swinger thing, it's whatever the lasso button is and then the jump button. So lasso jump, lasso jump, like Lasso jump, lasso jump. Swing, jump, swing, jump, whatever you're calling it. Yeah. Just to uh, be perfectly clear. Let me be clear. As soon as you hit this, go off and you'll die. When the cutscene starts, hold B to skip it. And then you'll respawn. Plankton will give you the spatula. Now all you gotta do, warp back to downtown to set up this, the collectible counter abuse again. Now pause and go back to return the museum's art. And you should get the spatula from Mrs. Puff for doing absolutely nothing. Now you pause the game and go to Top of the chum bucket. Make sure you split. Oh, I'm quick. Grab the sponge ball, and we're gonna do the kelp forest in the reverse order. This is probably the shortest segment in the run, as far as levels go. Kelp forest is also very broken in the original game too. So, all you gotta do here is jump on this invisible surface here. Then you can jump up to the invisible surface. I just learned this like yesterday, so just uh, cut me some slack. All you gotta do is, yeah, jump up here between these two vines. Okay, so there's an invisible wall here. You just go here, and you can jump straight up to here. Really easy. And that's it. You just skip the whole kelp forest. Hi, mermaid man. Now that we've done this, um, get the box and walk off the ledge, and you'll respawn at the bottom. Jump in the box again. Now switch over to Patrick to... The reason why we're doing this is because if you don't do this, uh, Patrick, excuse me, you will not be able to jump into the box with the time challenge. So that's why we're doing this now. Then accept the time challenge. Remember, switch to Patrick because it's critical you do so. Get the time challenge, you jump in here. The time challenge will still be active because of the glitch, I guess. And, uh, and you just walk over here. Just like in the original game, you can get the time trigger jump over and the spatula will appear and you can do the same thing with the spatula skip just like this now pause the game once you get the spatula warp to through the kelp caves then inch forward just a tiny bit because you don't get the trigger immediately you gotta inch forward turn around and then you'll be able to enter the kelp swamps now, you guys probably remember all this stuff from the history video, right? Well, it's the same in this game. Very similar, at least, so. All I gotta do now is just get the box, and... We're gonna go over here, because you can't hit it with the cruise... One, you can't hit it with the cruise bubble in the first place, and two... We don't even have the cruise bubble, because we skipped Robo Patrick in this run. That's right, there is no Robo Patrick in this speed run for uh, any percent without taxi glitch, so... Gotta just jump in the box here. Get the spatula. 
and then just pause and warp to Tiki Roundup. Now we're gonna just backtrack again. Make sure you're mixing in the belly humps to save a little bit of time. And just grab the spatula. And uh, now we're gonna do I excuse me, we're gonna do CCA again, collectible counter abuse. We're gonna just pause, go to uh, downtown. Uh, this is a more advanced route, I'd say. This is just not a very difficult game right now, you know? Pause the game, warp to Through the Woods once you've done that. The only thing I'm really excluding from this is like one sock in the sea caves that I find to be difficult for beginners. And um, something that the world record holder cut out of his run today as well. So like it's very similar to the world record route. You can still get a 53 with this run. And the world record being a 52 for reference, so... Yeah, it's very close. It's like what you should be doing right now. This is the meta where it is at this very moment. Once you have all these spatulas, pause the game and warp to yeah. on top of Shady Shoals. Oh, I'm quick! Now you can just grab this sponge ball. And again, the, so the, the sock that I told you I was going to get instead of the, one, the harder sock to do. I'll show you how to do it. But yeah, I've taught like most, like 99% of what's in this run. I've only excluded like one little small thing. Haven't excluded much, so yeah. Do that to jump up here. Um, again, you can just kind of watch, eyeball it to see what to do. The ledges around here, it's pretty, pretty big. This is not going to look right, but you'll be able to jump on it, don't worry. Uh, wait until the bungee hook turns to jump on this, because if you jump too early, um, you won't get the cuts, excuse me, you will you will just fall to your death if you jump too early because you won't be able to get onto the bungee cord yeah that's what i meant to say sorry uh, this jump might take a little bit of time a couple of tries to do just double jump spin pull to the left and you'll land on top of it it's pretty easy but it can be finicky just jump to the left excuse me jump to the left Again, as i'm saying it's hard for me to do this while i'm talking about it It is a bit finicky sometimes, but uh, it's harder for me to do it when I'm talking about it, you know. It's pretty simple, though. But yeah, if you do that correctly, you should be able to run up the wall and get the uh, spatula. Now, as a substitute for the other sock, you're just going to run down here, get this one. And, um, you can just death warp here if you want to, that's an option, or you can I'm run ready, back up and... I'm ready, I'm ready. Oh, excuse me, uh, you shouldn't death warp, actually, you should just run back. I'm used to the, the cutscene points, excuse me, I'm used to the... I'm used to the checkpoints from the original game. So you can just go from here, where the sock is, climb up. You can tap this little thunder tiki on the way. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that all the bomb bots are not here. No, make sure nothing's attacking you before you set this up, because if you mess it up, you won't get a sock. Stand right here where these two uh, tips of the tree touch. You know, make sure those tips are touching. And turn and face this snowman, sandman, and bullet and stand right here where the tips are touching. And when, this, when you get that sock, hold B, and you'll get a second sock for it. It just duplicates itself. Can't explain why, but yeah. Uh, as soon as you get that sock, just hold B and skip the cutscene, you get a second sock for free. Now you enter here, and uh, make sure you accept the time challenge. I know it's our habit at this point to just hold the B button, but make sure you press, you mash A when she tells you to, to accept the time challenge. And, uh, yeah. Keep your eye on your health. Check your underwear before going down the slide. You don't want to ruin the fun for all the other kids. Make sure you don't die, first and foremost. Yeah, this is all pretty self-explanatory. You can hit these Thunder Tiki's here, dodge that one, because again, your invincibility frames are pretty scarce in this game. 
And uh, you'll end up with one left if you do this the right way. May take you some tries to get it down, but yeah, it's not that bad. You should have 29 socks at this point. And now you can hit this button if you face it this way. You can hit the button through the, through the Duplicatatron. And you can do the same thing here. Now make sure when you hit this, you hold B as soon as possible and get away. Otherwise, you'll just blow up. So make sure you just try not to die. You can even hold an extra underwear on the slide if you want to make sure you don't die. And again, there's also um, an optional Tiki here. You can just bowl into it and get some extra shinies if you need it. The number you're looking for to have on the screen right now is 5,700. Um, obviously, we went a bit over, but if you're under, you want to have 5,700 by the time you get to the Clam and Dutchman's graveyard. So, uh, I'll bring it up again in a bit, but now that we're done with Sand Mountain, you can pause the game, warp the Chum Bucket. Oh, I'm quick! And, uh, you should be able to go to the Chum Bucket, or not the Chum Bucket, the, um, my bad, the, the Dutchman's graveyard, but 29 socks and 64 spatulas. <laughs> All right, so there are also some shinies on the way you can get if you're a little bit low on shinies. Remember, you want 5,700 by the time you get to the Dutchman Clan. So keep that in mind going forward. Just pull the Tiki over there if you need it. You can jump, bash, slam, you'll land on top of the grave. If you need these guys, you can get rid of these guys too and get a combo off the Tikis because combos are a lot more lenient in this game. Now we can get rid of the Chuck over here because the Chuck is going to try to attack you when you're setting up this trick. This trick is very easy. It looks a lot harder than it actually is. All you do is kind of box yourself so you're kind of like parallel to this here, this tree here. Face is kind of like, so you make like a little like, I guess like a pocket, little concave thing here. Now you're going to fully charge a bull and aim for, um, just past this screw, do you see, um... That's kind of hard to point out. Um... Well, you can make your own visual cue, but I usually aim for... Do you see where these two metal sheets meet each other, the ones that are kind of sticking out? I aim for just to the right of that. The little point that it makes where they, they come together on the bottom. So look at the bottom of these metal sheets and you see the little triangle they make with the shed. It's like a tri it's like a triangle, but it looks like somebody took a bite out of it. So you're looking for the shadow triangle that somebody took a bite out of. And you want to line it up for like putting the bowling shot right to the right of the tip. So yeah. More to the right. If you miss it, try going more to the right, and it'll bounce off and rebound and touch the Little hinge and bounce off and hit the button. It's really, really easy. I made it look way harder than it actually is just now. As long as you set it up the right way, it'll work pretty much every time. So yeah, very easy stuff here. Again, the really the only hard trick that you have to worry about is oil skip. And even oil skip's not that bad once you get down. And there's a way around it if you just buy the uh, tiki's. But yeah, everything I taught you in this route is. Apparently this is these are world record strats minus just one little sock that I excluded that probably lose like five seconds or so if you don't do it. Just because I'm not good at explaining it myself, so I chose not to show it. If you need extra shiny objects, you can hit all these along the way. Be careful here, because he will wait to attack you. Let him attack you, and then you can bowl down his shield. Maybe you can bowl him if you need some extra shinies. Now Walk over here until you see you kind of get walled off by this invisible thing. You might be wondering why there's an invisible thing here. That's because the slide, because we haven't knocked down the slide yet. It's still here even though we haven't knocked it down. So you can jump on it and slide. And uh, yeah, that's it for this part. Now we're going to walk over to the graveyard of ships. And here we're going to do a little bit of jump spacing to get under this here. There is a cycle to make, so be fast here. Walk off the ledge, jump, spin, jump, spin. It may take some time to get down, but it is pretty easy. Get the sock, and if you're fast enough, you should have one, you should have 30 socks, and two, you should have enough time to make it here. Again, a bit rusty with this stuff. So again, let me just, uh, coming from Squidward. Again, there are some invisible walls here, so it's not going to be as obvious. Just get, try a few times, get used to it. 
to get past the invisible walls. Do the same thing here. Bash, jump, 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 jump. Now for these wall jumps, try to walk as far as you can before jumping to them. The wall jumps in this game are really, really scripted and very easy to do, so you don't have to worry about setting yourself up to do them. So again, you can just kind of like walk up here on this side, so you appear on the other side. When you finish, just like that. Again, here are some tiki's if you need some extra shiny objects, you can hit them. By this time, you want to have 2,700, you want to have 2,700 shiny objects. 27, excuse me, you want to have 5,700 shiny objects. 27 for this, plus the 3,000 for crabs or later, equals 5,700. Here we're way over, obviously, but you want to have 5,700. If you're way over, um, reevaluate which shiny objects you're getting in the run. Maybe you don't do as much grinding in jellyfish fields. Um, calibrate it. Again, your first few runs, you're going to have to figure that stuff out. Again, there's another opportunity to get more shiny objects here if you have enough time. That time I didn't think fast enough because I was too busy explaining, but yeah. I'll hold back when I respawn here. To show you do this. And do this. That's it. Let's kind of mash the A button. Or the jump button, whatever it is. Really easy in this game. No timing required. Now for this, just make sure you don't go too far deep in here because this is a one-way wall. If you try to walk back out this way, you can't get back out. So you gotta make sure you don't go too deep. Sorry for whistling into the mic. Now all you gotta do, you can do it pretty simply by doing this. Um, sorry, I'm trying to like do this the easy way to show you guys how easy that is, but you can skip a bolt and go straight to this one. Again, I'm rusty, so give me a break. That's what I, this is the way I usually do it. I just jump straight to this one. Coming from the original game where the movement's more precise, it's kind of hard for me to get used to it. But yeah, this is a pretty simil similar thing too. You can kind of angle this down, bowl, jump, and walk into it. Skip the spatula. Ahoy there, Spun. Now, this part is probably the second most challenging part, but it shouldn't be frustrating. As long as I explain it properly, it should be pretty easily done. So here, jump spin, jump spin is not what you want to do. You want to stand from the tip of the cannon and do double jump spin, just like we used to do in the original game. Uh, the spin collision box lets you get over the ledge, so if you do jump spin, jump spin, you're not going to get high enough, so yeah. Double jump spin is what you want to do here. Make sure you hit this button. In my runs, I used to forget this button a lot, so make sure you hit this button. Get in the corner, just like this. And you want to turn just so his, um... The rope that's kind of like on Spongebob right now, it's not literally touching him, but from our perspective, it looks like he's touching him. You want to get the rope like more to like his edge around like here, just like that. Now fully charge a bowling shot, jump on it just like before, stand on it for a little bit and then jump. And uh, if you do it with the right timing, if you get in this like wobbly stuff, make sure you're back in the corner. Now, when you jump, there's like a little invisible wall on this mast here. Again, I had a lot of trouble learning this trick, so I want to explain it very well for you guys to understand now that we have better capabilities of explaining things, now that the game's been out for a while. Charge a bowling shot, jump, stand on it for a little bit so you get enough momentum, because the more the bowl pushes you, the, more, the higher you'll go. So stand for a little bit, but not too long and pull back into the wall so you get stuck on this invisible wall. And you can keep running into it to kind of catch your breath and watch and say, okay, I'm jumping to this platform to the left of me. So jump, spin, jump, spin to get over here. Now once you've done this, hit this button and this part is probably the second hardest trick in the run, but even then it's not bad. See this corner of this wooden um, part of the cannon? You see how the, um, the, the little pieces of wood the little wooden planks kind of stagnate a little bit. You want to be on the edge of this one, kind of like the corner. Like the corner is like poking SpongeBob. You see how the, his nose is kind of touching the corner of this wooden plank? Lined up just like this. Now you want to tap the bowling shot and jump onto it as fast as possible and jump. Just like that. See? And uh, you might have to calibrate it to get a feel for it. But if you do it the right way, 
Again, if you see yourself drifting more to the right when you're doing this, it means you didn't do it the right way, so make sure that you kind of like staying stationary. You want to jump as soon as you touch it to get that right jump height. Just like that. You got to be kind of quick. You can't wait too long. So again, this contrast from the one down there. For the one down there, you want to make sure that you're, you're waiting a little bit before you jump. For the one up there, you want to make sure you're doing it instantly. So again, charge a full shot bowl and wait the jump. Versus the exact opposite here. Charge a little shot. Don't, don't charge at all. Do a mini shot. Jump and then jump as soon as possible. If you do, if you set it up so you're not moving, again, just like that, it's very simple. Um, so again, your muscle memory is going to conflict with you here. You you might want to, you might be trying, your muscles might be trying to do the same thing for the top one that you're doing for the bottom one, but the two different cannon vol vertical ball boost jumps, they feel very different. So make sure you have appropriate mu muscle memory dedicated to both of them I guess don't try not to merge them together in your head because they're very different but yeah that's probably this and oil skip are probably the hardest ones you'll come across if you're having trouble doing those um, make sure that you um, also know that you can just do it casually as Sandy you can just um, you can do it as Sandy as well I can show you how to get up here as Sandy in case you wanted to skip doing those all you gotta do is just jump and uh, tap ball and mash jump, and you should be able to get up here. My bad. Uh, not not mashing jump. You want to tap ball, double jump, and you can get on top of here like this. So you can watch it again. Jump, jump. Um, sometimes that'll happen. Not a, not a problem. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Um, again, this is not. If you can do the bur if you can do the vertical bowl boosts, those are a lot better. Those are the ones I have practiced with, and they're the fastest way of doing this. But this is the alternative. You can't do those for some reason. If you're having trouble with them, you can just do it like that. I think the key to this one, again, I don't have much practice with it, is staying more to the left here when you do it. Jump, 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 jump. You can switch to Sandy and go around hitting all the buttons by jumping on the platforms casually. You know how it is. But yeah, um, I'll show this one more time. Just so you guys know. Double jump spin. Again, do it the right way. Double. That's muscle memory there. Again, you might do that by accident too. Double jump spin. Hit the button. Get yourself stuck in the corner. Turn so the rope is around here. Fully charge. Jump. Stay on it for a little bit. Then jump. Pull into this invisible wall. Jump spin. Jump. Hit this button over here. Get yourself so you're not moving. Again. Just like that. Get the spatula, and from here you can jump down here. Slam on this button. And the reason why we're not doing collectible counter of use for this is because it's faster just to do this anyway. And uh, yeah, that's it. Once you do that, you should have 70 spatulas and 30 socks. Pause the game, warp to top shady shoals. Oh, I'm quick! And again, you know how I said you needed, set, you needed 5,700 from earlier to do this. Well, we have 5,700, at least 3,000 because we uh, had at least 5,700 earlier. SpongeBob. So talk to crabs. You gotta walk away to get the text box again. So Take the spatula. If your route's optimized, you should have very few shiny objects left. Now you can just pop on over to Patrick with the SpongeBob. Now make sure you're careful not to collect these spatulas while you're getting them because you can collect all three at the same time. Just like that. Which I think is a nice improvement from the original game as well, and not having to watch all of them. So you do that, pause the game, warp to on top of the chum bucket. Now, I've already talked about how to do the chum bucket lab in my tutorial for um, the the warp category. Any percent with the the warp with the warp of use glitch, the taxi warp glitch. So I will try to. Um, Explain again, but if you feel that like my explanation is inadequate, you can just watch it again in my taxi glitch tutorial, which I'll link in the description. You can try that as well. Um, these strats are a little bit outdated, but they're very consistent. These, this is probably the most consistent way of doing this without doing the double hit strats, so I'll teach you how to do it. Make sure that as soon as you load into this level, 
You're walking off the cliff and use the cruise level because again, you unlock the cruise level automatically by going here. We know this from the glitch, the taxi glitch taught us that. Stand right in the middle of these two. Um, stand right in the middle between these two bolts and when Plankton's, the, sh the shadow of his like little glider ship goes past this bolt here. Uh, I'll, I'll just, okay, I'll do it again. So, what we're, what we're setting up here is called Plankton Disable. If you do this the right way, Plankton will not attack you throughout the duration of this. So, walk over between these two bolts, wait for his glider thing to pass that bolt. I was too late on this, um, again. I think it's for the benefit of you guys that you can, um, watch how it doesn't work. So, like, you, you know what to do if it... So you know what to do if I mess if you mess it up. So if you mess it up and you get hit, he's gonna keep attacking you. Not a problem. You can just do this from back here. Stand behind the trampoline. He'll keep attacking you, and he won't be able to hit you. See that? He just kind of hits the trampoline. He can't hit you. And from here, you can just hit all the buttons on him and deal with him that way. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with, with the plank and disable. So to do this, walk off the ledge. Use the cruise bubble as you're falling off. Stand between the two bolts on the ground, you'll notice them. And when Plankton's little laser, the shadow of his laser fire thingy, the red thing, goes past that bolt, attacking just like that. And if you did it just right, um, he should disable. Again, if you're having trouble, just hide behind the trampoline and do it that way. But yeah, if you do it, if you do it just right, he will be disabled. And again, I will link the tutorial for the taxi glitch run in the description. So if you had trouble with this explanation, you can just watch the other one. Now, follow this exact pattern that I'm doing. And I'll explain why so it's easier to remember. First, you're gonna hit this button on the bottom corner here. And because you hit him twice, he'll go to sleep. Now you can turn a little bit to the right and hit the button on his head he'll wake up. The reason why we're doing this one second is because he's asleep and because his head is closer to the ground, you save time by hitting his head since it's closer to the ground. Like you, You're saving time not having to go all the way up there to hit it in this position. Instead, when his head's down, you're just hitting it from like around here. So, now you want to, again, this is way easier on keyboard and mouse, so if you want to use keyboard and mouse for this section, uh, I'd probably recommend that instead. Um, you just pull left and hit the side here, hit the glove. Now, at this point, you've taken off enough health for him to go to sleep again. Turn the screen up, and you can hit him again. Whenever his head goes down, you want to hit the top so you don't waste time. And from here, the order for the rest of this doesn't matter as long as you hit the rest of them like this. And now we're in the final fight, the final battle. You can jump on top of... The trampoline here. Now there is a hand trigger right around here. If you jump, if you don't space these correctly, um, you will get grabbed. Apparently it's really hard to get grabbed, so it shouldn't be an issue for you. So um, I'll just show it again. If you get grabbed here, don't get discouraged. It just means you weren't spacing your jumps properly. Run off the ledge, jump, spin, jump, spin. So jump, spin, jump, spin. And you should land right on top of the fuse. Again, we're going to do a cruise bounce exploit where you jump on top of the trampoline. And shortly after you land, like moments after, you want to hold down. Excuse me, I'm a little bit rusty with this too. I'm just going to jump off just to show you. And I'll show you a backup too if you mess it up. So, just like that. This is explained in more detail in my tutorial for the any percent stuff, so I'll link that as well. But with this, you can hit the fuse. If you happen to miss it, you can always just jump down here and do it from here instead. So don't worry. You just do it this way instead. Um, just messed it up there. That, that, that scared me, by the way. Yeah, you, can, you can just do it that way. Once the fuse is broken, the checkpoint will have been activated. You can jump up here. Um, I'd recommend for the sake of consistency in a longer run, you just do this part without the Cobra Missile here, or whatever it's called, the, um, the Cruise Bounce. Yeah, this part does have a Cruise Bounce, but I'm just going to recommend doing this instead. 
Um, if you want to see the crews bounce in action, you can watch the other tutorial I'm going to link as well. But yeah, you can just do that. And you can hit the thing like that. When he's up here, be extremely careful because if you hit him, if you hit him this way, um, and you fall off, you'll get checkpointed down there. And that's really bad. You don't want to do that because you have to, you, you'll soft lock the rest of the fight because the game, um, the developers do not allow you to refight these bosses. So you'll have to actually go through the entire fight to get back up here. So be very careful not to fall there. I advise you. Now there's another cruise bounce over here. Um, it's a little bit more precise. You got to do it a little bit earlier. Again, I went over it in my other video. You can watch that if you want to. I want to save your time, so you, if you're more if you're more interested in the advanced strategies, you can save a little bit, tiny bit of time. You can watch that in the specialized tutorial on the brain that I've already talked about. Now that, that fuse is hit, you can do a jump spin, wait a little bit, jump spin again, and now hold now me, brother. Me, brother. <laughs> That's how you speed run the no taxi glitch version of any percent for Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. And that wasn't even that long. Uh, in the past, when I did tutorials for the original game, it took me way longer to get through it because um, the tricks are a lot more complex. But this game is pretty simple. And what I just taught you is capable of getting, like, within a minute of world record, really. I'm sure. Um, the game's updating every day, so I don't know if that statement will be true a couple of days from now, but. I'll be making individualized tutorials on new strategies as they come out. Um, I know that Josh is doing ballroom in his runs now. So I feel like when uh, when that strat's more consistent, I'll make a tutorial explaining how to do it. But yeah, like this is not like a little beginner, like watered down route. This is actually how the game is played. If you want to get into a game that's pretty accessible, has a pretty low skill ceiling and lets you get right into it and focus on improving. Um, if you're not, if you, if you want to run the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, but you found the tricks too difficult, or you want to wait until a time when you have an Xbox or a GameCube or something like that. If you want to focus on, like, maybe you're new to speedrunning and you need, like, a, an easier game to get into first, before you get into one of the harder ones, you know. This game is a very great place to start. It's $30 on Steam. Super easy to get into. It splits for you if you set it up, you know. It's, it's like, very simple. It's a very simple run. Not a lot of tech to learn. Um, while I do believe the original Battle for Kimi Bottom is very accessible and easy to learn because of all the resources we have, it's it's a much more technical game. If that's more of your speed, more technically fast-paced games, um, you can speedrun that version as well. I'll link the tutorial to the original game's speedrun in the description, which works on the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, and everything in between. Um, I'll have both tutorials linked up, because I've seen people... Um, going to my original tutorial, my, the original game's tutorial, and asking like, do these strats work in Rehydrated? No, they don't. They're entirely different games. Same community playing both games, but entirely different games. So yeah, you get you guys now have a live tutorial for Rehydrated. Uh, when the route starts to become more optimized and like things start to slow down a little bit, I'll make an advanced tutorial that, you know, it's more like an edited, clean style like you're used to for the original game. Because those strats, obviously, the original game is more developed and we've had more time to uh, figure out the best ways to teach people. But yeah, if you want to beat the original game in under one hour, um, that will be available to you. And this route is, again, this is like this is a top level route minus the ballroom skip in like one sock. So if you want to get into Battle for Bikini Bottom, this is not like the first step to learning you know it's not like the original game where like you have to put in a much bigger commitment to learn you have to commit a lot of time to um going through the routes and like learning new routes and stuff this is like this is the top level spatula selection minus ballroom because the game is pretty new and it's not that optimized yet now's a good time to get into it if you're trying to get into it so yeah uh, you can get a you can get a top level time with this route there's no catch um, if you're used to the original game where it's like shift usually teaches these tutorials with like watered down strategies people can get into the run more easily and the other tutorials are like individualized nope this is not watered down at all this is like most most of the stuff is what i'm doing in runs now this is all this is, this is what i'm doing in runs yeah so uh, yeah that's pretty much it 
So thank you guys for watching if you don't plan on learning the game. If you do plan on learning the game, um, I'm happy you chose it because I'm most happy that this game is accessible to everybody. And it's a nice way, it's like the perfect starting game for speedrunning. If you're brand new to speedrunning and you want to get into a game that's not as intimidating to learn, you want to you want to see how speedrunning feels but you don't want to like challenge yourself too much this is a great way of getting into it and remember oil skip there's a way around it by grinding in tiki's go boom and buying the clams instead so yes uh, now we have tutorials for both games and i don't want to take up much more of your time so thanks for watching if you want to ask questions about the game um i'm probably going to take a break from playing this game for a while because i'm kind of burned out from playing it the past couple of weeks um I want to spend more time playing the original game because I feel like I'm on the verge of a PB and I feel weird distracting my time with this game right now, so... I'm glad that I was able to play it enough to make a tutorial for you guys to learn. That was always the goal, you know. Um, this is not really a game that I planned on taking extremely seriously, but... I want everybody to have the opportunity to do so if that's what you want to do. So, I'll continue making tutorials on the game, I'll continue making content to keep it exciting and fresh. Make sure you go to the leaderboards and follow the top runners to watch their runs, because they'll be doing more runs. But, um, yeah, with that, I'll keep uploading content based around the game when I see fit. And subscribe for more of that, along with the original game as well. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Couldn't see that because the, the mic was in the way, but I was giving you the thumbs up. <laughs> Alright.